Now heed a tale of long ago, how it all started, that first great war. For centuries, tensions had been simmering between two factions of gods, the hedonistic Aesir and the Vanir, known for their connection to nature and magic. So Freyr, one of the Vanir's most revered leaders, attempted an act of diplomacy, travelling across the realms to teach the Aesir gods the way of the harvest, with accompanying spellcraft fit to feed all of Asgard. The Aesir were taken by Freyr's charm and ecstatic with the new powers he bestowed upon them. But such astonishing spells always have a downside, and the Aesir weren't about to blame themselves when things went wrong. Instead, the hot-headed Aesir cast their blame on Freyr. Furious at the unpredictable magic, they tortured and even attempted to kill him. But the Vanir god wouldn't be undone so easily. He escaped and fled back home to Vanaheim. His family was incredulous with anger at what had happened. They swore revenge against Asgard. And thus began the first and most barbarous war between the gods. Skirmishes between the Aesir and Vanir continued for centuries. Odin, the proudest of the Aesir, sought an end to the back and forth. So he assembled the largest army ever seen and marched it toward Vanaheim. Fear and deference cloaked the landscape as the Aesir soldiers stomped across it. But the King of Gods had never lost a battle, and he surely never would. But as the throngs of troops descended upon the lush pastures of the Vanir Kingdom, a fearsome army was fallen back two steps for every advance it made. None could match the pure brute force of the Aesir attacks, but the merciless soldiers had never encountered so many Vanir gods casting Sather magic at once. With colossal damage done on both sides, the Aesir eventually retreated. Odin's conquest had failed and the warring factions of gods found themselves stuck in a stalemate once again. With Asgard and Vanaheim both ravaged, the two sides could only now consider what was once unthinkable. Compromise. So Mimir, a particularly brilliant negotiator, was selected as the sole arbiter between the two sides, and he brokered an interesting solution. Freya, Freya's sister, and the other leader of the Vanir would marry Odin, king of the Aesir. Struck by Freya's beauty, Odin readily agreed. But Freya spat at the thought. Odin had tried to destroy her home, her family, and everything she loved, and, oh yes, attempted to murder her beloved brother. Still, she couldn't let the chance for peace among the realms pass by. Though she barely managed a smile through the entire ceremony, the Aesir Vanir wedding was cause for enormous celebration. As Odin took in his beautiful new wife, draped in the finest fabric and Vanir jewels, his kingdom felt nearly complete. As for Freya, well, with the promise of peace resting behind his cold smile, Odin didn't seem too terrible. The raucous party continued well into the night, with the sounds of celebration carrying throughout the kingdom. Yet the peace this union provided carried much further, rippling from Asgard to Jotunheim, Muspelheim, and every place in between. Married life for Freya was tolerable at first. She taught her husband Sather spells, and though the high goddess of the Vanir missed her home, she was bestowed with new purpose here. But as Freya became more content, her husband only grew less so. Odin was consumed with the idea that Ragnarok, the battle said to end all things, was imminent. He claimed the giants were behind Ragnarok, insisting that if he could destroy the Jotnar, he could stop the apocalypse. But he wouldn't make the mistake of simply gathering his armies this time. 
Instead, Odin employed the greatest smiths in all the realms, the Dwarven brothers Brock and Sindri, to create a weapon of unimaginable destruction. Once it was finished, Odin bestowed the mighty hammer Mjolnir to his son, Thor, and sent him out to slay every giant he could find. Thor accepted the task with glee. But Freya could no longer hold her tongue in the face of this genocide. She fought back, vowing to leave her husband and return to Vanaheim, even if it meant the chaos of war would overtake the realms again. Freya had nearly escaped out of Asgard's high gates when Odin saw her. She attempted to plead with him to just let her leave and to leave her people alone. But any sympathy Odin might have once had was, like his sanity, lost long ago. Instead, the king of the Aesir blindsided her with a Sather incantation. When Freya had taught him magic, it always seemed he was only humoring her. But he must have studied further, for Odin came up with a particularly creative and cruel spell. It not only banished her from Asgard, but also forbade her from raising her hand in combat, even in self-defense. Freya stammered, trying to counter with a spell of her own, but now, instead of casting magic, she was suffering its twisted effects. She felt warm and tired as her vision blurred. She stumbled, and then it all went black. When she awoke, Freya found herself far from Odin, but more distraught than ever. Now war would surely return. And with the Aesir in possession of the Masterwork Hammer, the end of her marriage might indeed mean the end of her people. Now her only hope was that, in time, some brave soul would finish what she could not, restoring balance and peace to the realms. Ah! Herein lies the tale of Thormur, the doomed stonemason. Thormur the giant, a Jotun, was the greatest mason the realms had ever known. Hoping to save his people from Thor's campaign of destruction, the elder giant toiled day and night, building a massive wall around Jotunheim. But finishing it alone was nigh impossible. He hoped to enlist the help of his only son, Hrimthur, but the boy had the heart of a warrior, not a builder, and refused to complete the task set forth by his father. Perhaps the mason had too much fear, or his son too much pride. Either way, the frustrated Thalmur let out a bellow so loud it uprooted trees in the nearby woods. Then their quarrel came to blows. Eventually, Hrimthur ran off into the night, forsaking his father one last time. Thalmur gave chase, only to find himself lost and alone in Midgard. His desperate cries never found the boy, and instead drew attention of another lurking in the darkness, Thor. Their battle was fierce but decisive. A blow from Thor's hammer caused Thalmur to fall on his own chisel, driving it straight through his skull. He landed upon a village, crushing its inhabitants who were known for worshipping the Vanir god Njord. His fall released a great burst of freezing energy, cloaking the landscape in snow and ice for miles in every direction. Thor always took credit for planning all this, but the truth is the sweaty ball bag just got lucky. Their father-son quarrel forever changed the landscape of Midgard. The dead stone mason lies there to this day, an everlasting reminder of Thor's brutality and the consequence of a son who dares betray his father.
no matter the darkness, nothing will stand in our way. Again. Responsibility is far greater. <laughs>